the first thing that I realized, which is the overriding thought leading to probably the three insights, it's like, um, it's, leadership is like riding a horse. Um, in two ways, one, um, and your horse probably being your thoughts and your people, and uh, you don't really know who's riding who and who's going to win by the end of it. So either you're going to do it together or you're going to fail together, which includes your thoughts and your, uh, the people who are riding with you. And um, the three things that probably drive this race are um, to begin with trust. And if both the people are not trusting each other, and again by people I mean thoughts and people, if they're not trusting, you're not going to win the race or come back, figure out what went wrong and go for the race all over again. So the first thing being trust. So the leader's most important job is to make more leaders. Second being uh, hug. It started by thinking that we hug a lot when we're at work and uh, it keeps us together, it keeps us going. And uh, more importantly, you need a hug whether you win or you lose because each way you have to still move forward and make towards your next journey. My second insight, I have my own shoes. I don't need to fit into anyone else's. I can sure use their footprints as inspiration. And the third being love. And uh, that primarily comes from loving what you do and ensure that you know what they love doing and make them love what they do as well. And my third one, there are no finish lines in entrepreneurship, just milestones to be celebrated. The first story is actually a stra strange one that led for me to believe long time back that trust is one of the most important things. Is uh, There was a job I was doing, I was working with uh, someone called Mr. Sunil Lula and I had done a huge goof up as a management trainee and um, I was being blasted by someone else who was the person we were working for. And uh, while the person was pulling me up for the goof up I had done, uh, Sunil walked up and he stood in front of me and he was my boss. And he told the other person, there is no way this has happened and this has happened, it's my responsibility. I will ensure this happened, but I must tell you that my team will never do something like this. And he stood up there and just took over. I was standing right behind him. It was a long debate between the two of them. And uh, I was just standing behind him like a management trainee, seeing him fight uh, something. And it had huge repercussions, what I'd done. And uh, after it got sorted and we walked away, I went behind Sunil and I said, uh, Sunil, I just want to tell you that uh, that was my mistake. He looked at me and he said, I know that. Uh, just don't do it again. And he walked. And that was the moment for me when I realized that he just wants to trust me. He just wants to believe that I'll do the right thing. And from there on, even if I'm doing right or wrong, the first thing I would do is I would go and tell him. And I think that somewhere just went with me long term in my life where I said, if I have a team and the team is doing something, just stand in front of them and ensure that you're taking the bigs and batters and, but still know what is honestly going on behind the scene. I at 17 and that too, and I tried to start up a microfinance institution. It all seemed a bit crazy to everyone around me. However, my parents gave me the freedom to mold myself into a leader. So I truly believe in empowering my team members as much as possible. I think it is essential to give them their freedom to explore as they remained aligned with the larger vision. To make them all leaders in their own sense. As I do this, I have realized that my personal bandwidth has increased as well. I can do so much more in the same amount of time. This results in all of us being so much more productive and being able to do so much more as a team. The next one being hug. Uh, this is from a recent uh, incident that we had in a company where we were fighting uh, the sensor board. Uh, and uh, it was strange that we made a WhatsApp group where we were all connecting while uh, I'm sure everyone knows Anurag was out there fighting the battle. And the group was called Gladiators. And uh, it really came from that morning where we were sitting and we thought it was a lost cause. We did not know where we're headed, whether we'll win or we'll lose. And the only thing we told each other, just stick together. And we came up with this group called Gladiators. And we realized that just that hug, and might be a softer term for saying the same thing, was something that just took us through that battle and we came out victorious. But the more important thing was, the way it happened, even if we had lost, that hug would have stayed and we would have been prepared for the next battle together. So, and uh, yeah, it was a great feeling. So I think for, for anyone who comes uh, from a family with a legacy, it can be very pressurizing at times. 
So I've seen the works of my great-great-grandfather, my great-grandfather, my grandfather, and now my father. I have come to realize that having such a legacy is a blessing and an inspiration, not a burden. I think it is very important to realize that everyone has their own journeys, and I am my own individual. I feel very blessed and see the legacy as an inspiration to continue to work hard and continue to achieve my dreams. Third but being love, uh, this uh, actually came to me from some, I don't know how to ride a horse at all, but this came to me from someone who does do that very often and is a really good jockey. And he said, when I'm sitting on top of the horse, the horse doesn't need to know that I'm sitting on top of him. The horse needs to know that he's just running in the wind, he's running on his grass, he's having a great time, and it's him and his wind and the far side ahead of him. And um, it's not about me, it's about the horse. And he said, I don't know what the horse is thinking though, but uh, at the same time, it is just to make that journey his journey and his victory his victory. And if he loses, again, go back and give him a hug, but ensure that he feels the breeze while he's running. And uh, yeah, I hope that's happening. Third insight, which was, uh, there are no finish lines in entrepreneurship, just milestones to be celebrated. So I still remember the struggle to find our very first client, um, and then reaching 10 clients, and then 100, and then 1,000. And now we stand at above 1 lakh clients. So there's really no finish line. Um, as I embark on a new journey to, of launching my second venture, which is in the realm of e-commerce, I have truly, truly learned that there is no finish line. Uh, as ambitious human beings, I think we all want to achieve more and make a greater positive impact. But therefore, I think that the milestones must be cherished and celebrated. I think it's very important to enjoy the journey. It's so like the Olympics. <laughs> Each year you think that the record has been broken and then someone comes and breaks it. And she's coming from a huge legacy where people have been just breaking records and now she's going to have her own new battle and her own new record. So it's like being in the Olympics. But the beauty of it is that you work so hard for so long and so beautifully with so much relentlessness just for that five seconds of fame at times. And uh, I think it's her moment to run Thank her you. Olympics Very now. kind. Thank you. So Vikas said, reminded me of life of Pai. Um, I think being a leader is like struggling together with your team and uh, overcoming barriers successfully, which is through love. And all of that, as you mentioned, trust, hugs. And what was the third one? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. Yeah. It so gets I dirty think... after that. So it's... Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I think it reminded me of life of Pi. <laughs>